for Best Music Coach. My name is Dan, and you are watching a music teacher's reaction live and in real time to Risk of Rain 2 DLC Survivors of the Void. I've never played this game before. I have never heard this music before. And even though I have spoken to this game's composer, I have never gotten spoilers about this before. So this really is going to be my very first time checking this out. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right in and everything I say, do, teach, play, talk about is going to be off the top of my head in the moment. This is going to be a wild ride. We are live. Welcome everyone in the chat. Let's do this thing. Here we go. Prelude in D flat major. Now, uh, just a quick note before we jump into this. Uh, oftentimes you'll have a prelude uh, followed by a fugue. However, uh, seems like... Well, the fugues just aren't happening. I wonder why that might be. Here we go. Prelude in D-flat major. <laughs> Everyone hear that's like slightly detuned there? This is so pretty and intricate and delicate. Now something is really oh I'll, I'll wait till the end to say more. Now we have that sort of mellotrony flute sound coming in there that we heard at the beginning of Risk of Rain One, I think. Okay, so something I want to point out um, is that that was played, well, at least for the most part, live. And the way you can tell, especially if you've done some work in DAWs or digital audio workstations before, is that not all of the notes were quantized with each other. When, when you heard chords, uh, it was, yeah, that's, there's, bugada, bugada. Ah, oops, that'll teach me not to look. As opposed to all together at the same time, when you hear that separation between the notes, to do that without having recorded it is like a lot of work. So you have to go in and like pull each note and like try to get it in and no. live. Very interesting, uh, very beautiful uh, prelude there. Also, a lot of interesting, like little small bits and textures on that. Very cool. All right, let's keep this next uh, thing going with a placid island of ignorance, which is sometimes how I feel when a bunch of people who are smarter than me are talking. Okay, let's go. A placid island of ignorance. There was our little Pikachu, uh, not Pikachu, uh, Yoshi sound. We heard in uh, Risk of Rain 2. Gamble on again. Oh! 
<laughs> five. It's five, Aspie. Not gonna be ten. No, classic Chris is five. It's five. He told me. It's five. And I'll break I'll break an explanation down afterwards. If it, if he's never five, it's it's, it's five. It's not ten. And I'll, I'll break it down. So wet. <laughs> We've heard that before. We heard that thing before. I love that thing. It's just like very slowly descending down uh, with the little pew, pew, pews. Um, okay, hey, uh, all right, look, I want to break something down for you uh, in music theory, and, and this is called hypermeter. Um, okay, so uh, by the way, I did have confirmation from Chris himself saying, look, it's in five. It's not tens, it's fives. And, and this is something that I, I'm going to go back to from uh, the Risk of Rain 2 stream. I was like, look, okay, yes, it is cycling in groups of 10, but it's highly unlikely a composer is writing in 10, 4, and it's much more likely composers writing in 5, 4, 5, 8, or 5 something. Um, okay, so, it, and, uh, 
the hypermeter, okay, so hypermeter is, well, it's larger groupings than one measure. So for example, like you feel uh, every eight measures or every two measures or every 16 measures, There's it's those larger cycles of, well, the meter turning around, right? And so what happens is that no, not even five plus five. It's five, but the hypermeter, you hear 10 as, but within the 10 of the hypermeter, it is like two measures of five. Because if you think about it this way, in, in four, four, and uh, this is actually an example Chris gave, he was like, look, if you think about it, a lot of times you hear something in four, four, where there is a two measure cycle of something over, but we're not going to call that eight, four. We know it's four, four. So there you go. Um, cool. Hypermeter, larger groups than what you think there, there, there might actually be. So if you know nothing about music theory, know this, that we could count something in uh, one, two, three. So don't, bad, won't count, won't, bat, bat, won't, book a bump, bay, bump, bat, bump, bat, bump, but okay. And I think I'm saying that wrong. But anyway, every time that melody comes around, that's like a group. And we just think of, we don't need to worry about any of the, just think of that as a group of five. And the, the thing is that something could go over two groups of five before it repeats. So the question is, is it a group of 10 or is it two groups of five? And really what we're saying is it's two groups of five and that the hypermeter, how you're feeling the larger groups is going to be a, a, a larger number. And again, like I cannot think of a single time I've seen a composer write something in 10. I can think of tons of times I've seen composers write stuff in five. Okay. This next one is called Having Fallen, It Was Blood. By the way, someone said that all these track names are references to either books or movies. And looking at this, the only one I can think of off the top of my head is a boat made from a sheet of newspaper, and I think that's it. Like the the book, it. Anyway, uh, let's go. Having fallen, it was blood. See, like right here, this, the riff is going two cycles of four. It's not eight, four, it's four, four. Come on. There's that pixel sound we heard in screen two. like this double harmonic thing going here but not double because we have a flat seven
nice. All right, I really want to break down the scale from this. Okay, because this is really cool. So it, it's not a double harmonic because I, I'll show you what a double harmonic is. So a double harmonic would be... Uh, but instead, uh, Chris is using a flat seven here. I know I'm not playing that riff quite right, but... Uh, Fun, a really fun scale for any of you music theory nerds out there. We're going one, flat two, major three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one. Super cool. All right, let's get uh, to the next one, which is called Out of Whose Womb Came the Ice. Sounds like a whodunit. It was Mr. Mustard with the womb in the living room and the ice. <laughs> the Book of Job, I like Job. One of my middle names, let's go. yesterday and must have seen but it was a little different last time The harmonies that were made between that synth and that guitar were delicious. And of course, it's not just gonna end like that. This guitarist is tapping here. Oh, it's so cool. So just to break down, obviously, 
so much going on there, but just to give you a little piece, a little taste of what was happening there, basically that whole song was built around kinda sorta three chords. I'm gonna simplify this here, but basically we just had E minor, and then we went to a B major, so if E minor is one, we go E, F, G, A, B, so some kind of five. We have some kind of one, some kind of five, to then to C, back to five. Um, which is like one chord away from being, ah, no. I was thinking of Creep by Radiohead, that's E major. Uh, no, it's not. Eh, never mind. I'm hearing something off in my head. Let, let's keep this thing rocking and rolling. Okay, uh, this next one is called... I make mistakes too sometimes. This next one is called Once in a Lullaby. I'll figure out what I was hearing there. It was uh, doing... Uh, I'll figure it out. Oh, it's yeah. It's from it's from what the hell am I doing here? That that yeah. It's just up a half step, major chord. That is so bit crushed, that's delicious. Beautiful double read, probably an oboe there. You know, we're more used to hearing oboe in this range here. Uh, it's a double read. Not a hundred percent sure. Ah. Not a hundred percent sure on the instrument there. Oh, thank you, Chris. English horn, then oboe. I was thinking, yeah, because I've, I've never heard an oboe that low. taking over the melody.
Oh my goodness. Ow! Oh my gosh, so much going on. I love that the melody and like that counter melody both have a guitar leading the charge. Bolero, yeah. I don't even think of buggy do da. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> uh. Okay. So, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yes. Uh, two things. Number one. So uh, Chris, uh, I was explaining to me. Uh, I, I, I'm very, very lucky to have him yesterday. By the way, shout out. Huge respect to Chris. Um, I, I had the huge, huge, huge honor of uh, having some of his time yesterday. And he was talking about how he didn't have quite as much time to compose the DLC music. Now, something that I want to contrast here, which I think is interesting, because I pointed this out in the Risk of Rain 2 stream, was that there were not a lot of songs that were sort of like relying on a chord progression. And relying, again, maybe is not the best word, but there weren't a lot of songs that had sort of like a pop as we would think of chord progression that kind of repeated to to give you the foundation of the song. And that's one of the things I was pointing out that clearly took so much work because everything was so carefully composed and it wasn't just like a chord put down and then things built on it. But you can hear there wasn't as much time here. There wasn't three years to go in and like meticulously go and build everything out. So a lot of the songs we've heard so far do have underlying chord progression. So I think it's very interesting to contrast Risk of Rain 2 with this here. Also, one other thing I wanted to share with you, right as I was uh, leaving talking Chris uh, with Chris yesterday, I was like, man, I really do hope you can show up and correct me on the next stream because for sure, I was like, dude, for sure, I thought the boogie doo da the, 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 um, yeah, it's, Chris says, yes, essentially each piece here is literally one idea, indeed, that's then extrapolated and built on as opposed to transitions. Then, you know, it's, anyway, what I was saying to Chris is like, man, you know, I really hope you could show up because um, uh, like literally the uh, Duga, the the risk of rain motif, I was like, for sure, I thought you were inspired by a leaky faucet going like plunk, 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 plunk. Plunk, 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 like water dripping out of a faucet, right? Because like rain and water, he was like, no, bro, <laughs> that's not it. So it's lovely to have the actual composer themselves to uh, rein in any flights of fancy I might go on about things that are not actually real. Okay, so this next one is called A Boat Made from a Sheet of Newspaper. <laughs> no B section, the album. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, come on now. I'm gonna break down the guitar effects after this. That was a little telephone sound. Okay, so some really interesting effects used on the electric guitar there. Two main things I want to point out in addition to all the distortion and all that. Number one is an octave or octaver effect or an octavizer effect. That was, uh, the guitar was playing a note and then it was always playing the note, uh, the octave below. So that was like, if this is the note the guitar was playing, you're also hearing the lower note. And on top of that, to keep on playing with the pitch even more, there was even a pitch shifter effect where you can have a uh, pitch pedal where when you take it all the way down, it actually bumps you up an entire octave going on there. So lots of absolutely weird, wild, and wonderful things going on in that guitar solo. All right, let's keep this thing rocking and a rolling, a rocking and a reeling, Barbara Ann. <laughs> Is that not a guitar? No, say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. Ah! <laughs> ah. Oh, Chris takes my ears for a ride. All right, so we have Topla coming in now. Possibly Murdung, or a different drum in them. Oh, I love this. Oh gosh, what does this remind me of? Remind me a little bit of Michelle Nicolicello. <laughs> Sorry. Also a little uh, like Riders on the Storm with the. Uh, Now Tambora coming in underneath with the drone. Yeah, a little riders on the storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it sounds to me like possibly a Bonsuri 
a bansuri, bansuri sample in there. Could just be a regular flute though. I'm only hearing bits and pieces of it. Ah, there's our major third again. We're just getting the, the risk of rain motif rhythm a bunch here. Beautiful. So two things I want to point out. I want to point out one thing and then I want to answer one question from the chat. Uh, so um, the Tambura or also said Tampura, depending on who you talk to, is an Indian instrument that uh, is usually um, boom, boom, boom. three strings, uh, can be four, and it goes <laughs> that's the pattern it usually does is and it does that over and over again because it's so resonant it does that over and over again and that creates the foundation everything else can build off of now the question that I think is very interesting that I'd love to answer from chat is hey Dan random question what is the difference between a remix a cover and a take if you guys don't mind, I'm going to answer that question. So, all right. So a remix and a cover, those can actually be very similar. However, uh, a remix is typically uh, when you take already existing stems uh, or uh, you take the already existing uh, things that were recorded in the original, you use those and you either rework the way they're configured or you rework the arrangement and you can also add in your own. So a remix is like you take some parts of the original thing and then you do something to them. Uh, now a cover is when you take the same song and again, you are going to take all the elements but you generally would perform them differently. So like you would go and make your own like, okay, so let's say uh, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Let's say Chris made just the most insane version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star you've ever heard in your life because if Chris made Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, it would be the most insane version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Okay. So, all right, if we're doing a remix of Chris's version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, uh, we take the melody, right, the same exact, the actual the actual uh, digital file of the melody and we take it into our session and then we just put different instruments behind it, okay? That, that's remixing. Now, a cover is when I'm going to take his version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure you know I'm doing his version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but I'm gonna do it my way. I'm gonna go like you know I don't know, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how I wonder what you are. And because I did it that way, uh, that's gonna be my cover of Chris's version of Twinkle Twinkle Star. Typically, uh, you, you, would, you wouldn't do a cover of Twinkle Twinkle, uh, you do a cover of a song that's like well-known. Um, 
and, and that would be your cover. And then a take is when you are recording and that's like one try through. So um, what I just did was take one of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Let's say, let's pretend we record that. Here's gonna be my take two of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star How I wonder what you are. Little sharp four six there. So it's just a different version. All right, let's keep this thing rocking and rolling with the face of the deep. Oh, that was sick. There was that like eighth note displacement there. That was atrocious. Oh my goodness.
And right at the end, and right at the end, those sleigh bells, those little bells were swinging. Um, bo bum, Um, okay. So before we listen to the last track on this uh, on this DLC, I think what's wild to point out is okay. Number one, that was absolutely sick. The sax solo was sick. The synth solo was sick. It, it was just it was insane. But um, what was what's really interesting too is uh, like like Chris pointed out, it's like there's one idea. And obviously, uh, you know the the tracks need to loop in the game. But the where you can see Chris's flair for like the insane is every outro that we have for all of these songs that we've heard, that we've enjoyed, that we've loved has been like absolutely nuts. There's always been a sprinkle of crazy in the outros and i'm a hundred percent loving it okay this next one is called who can fathom the soundless depths thanks i think it's james cameron This feels too straightforward, man. I don't trust it.
And suddenly D flat major. Now I can't place it. What's happened right here, I've heard this before. Huh. So this sort of ends the way it starts with this piano and this prelude kind of style. I think, I think honestly, uh, for, for my reaction to this, I 100% love it. I think anything Chris does is honestly pretty, pretty sick. And it's like, I said a little bit of craziness. I'm not, I'm not being literal about like craziness, but it's like there's an edge to it, man. There's an edge to it. So I think, too, uh, listening, uh, one thing that I find interesting is that a couple of times throughout this DLC, there's been, uh, there was more playing around with perhaps, uh, we could call them kind of modes, like sticking, sticking with a certain scale or an idea for periods that, uh, for me, didn't feel uh, like we were hearing that in Risk of Rain 2 quite as much. Um, but as you all know, I always get a little hesitant to really go whole hog and, 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 and say a whole lot when, when a composer themselves is here. Um, if anyone would like to think of some question that no one has ever asked Chris before that might be a really cool thing to think of, not like what's your favorite song, but like, you know, Deadbolt, yeah. So I think that the drop shaman actually has a, a piano dynamic. Chris, I actually do have a question. If or, uh, who, who, who can fathom the soundless depths? Um, I'm not familiar with that Chopin piece. Does Chopin move from D flat minor to D flat major like you did, or is that like a, a Chris thing? If I may be so bold as to ask a question. We'll put some background music on. And if we never hear from Chris again, well. <laughs> no, he does. Ah, it's pretty much a note for note adaptation. Thank you very much for answering the question, Chris. And thank you so much for taking the time to come hang out. Yeah. Oh, Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea. Yeah, the proggy jazz stuff. Yeah, some of those some of those synth solos we were talking about in Risk of Rain 2 sounded like Herbie Hancock. Like um, the one I was thinking of was Night in Tunisia with um, Chaka Khan, where he does that sick synth solo. Also hearing some Jordan Rudis 
in there. It's actually from D flat major to C sharp minor. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, So we we have a, we have a uh, technical correction from Chris. It's actually from D flat major to C sharp minor. And if you don't understand uh, anything about music theory, I'm gonna explain that to you and why I laughed. It's because this note right here is known as D flat. Now I just sprinkled some magic crazy dust on it, and all of a sudden, this same note has become C sharp. So D flat and C sharp. It's like you know how the word two sounds exactly the same, but you can spell it T-O, T-O-O, and T-W-O. Well, there's similar things in music where you can have the same sound, but it's just spelled differently. Jordan Rudis for sure. Ah, oh, very cool. It's a correction from Chopin, that's the way he writes it, but it makes a lot of sense. Way easier to read. Excellent. Well, I'll tell you what, y'all y'all keep on rocking and rolling. Chris, thanks so much for being here. You're welcome to hang out for as long as you want. I'm going to read some super chats, though, while we hang. <laughs> Elijah Weiss says seeing a D-flat minor would make a... Yeah, yeah it's, it's the... Uh, it's the F-flat that gets me. <laughs> it's like, once I'm seeing F flats, I'm like, eh. <laughs> uh. We'll just hang out and let this roll. Chris, feel free to not respond to any questions and just like say bye if you're tired of it. But if you want to, you, I'm going to leave this up. You, we can rock and roll. Chris is doing some Q&As. Y'all ask. I'm just be here hanging out.
Là.
Well, Chris is tired of hearing me noodling, everyone. So, we are going to go ahead. And read some super chats. Roverman202 says, upvoting Mother 3 again. I wish I could give more. I'm going to try to be more conservative. Uh, glad to support you in any way, though. Roverman202, I always appreciate your support. Chris, obviously, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> and I'm glad you enjoyed the noodles. Would you like to try my noodles? <laughs> oh. Rubman202, thank you so much for your support, uh, both for me and for the channel. Chris, thanks so much for hanging out. It was so cool to talk with you yesterday. Uh, Bex. By the way, Chris, feel free to hang out as long as you want. I will leave this stream up. Uh, Bex. Lizard. Hey, Bex. <laughs> yes, the Russian. Have you not heard of the Russian spaghetti? I thought everyone uh, knew about the Russian spaghetti chef. Okay. Um, Bex Lizard says, hello, hi. Hotline Miami 1, please. And thank you. You got it, Bex. Jonah. You know, by the way, I should plug this. Hey, before I go any further. Uh, Chris and I sat down yesterday and we actually talked and believe it or not, we recorded the conversation. It was really cool. Chris was unbelievably generous with his time. And I'm going to see if I can find the link for it and share it with you guys. Okay, here we go. Found it. Share link. Here we go. How's this for a call to action? Guys, I just put a link in the chat. And that's a conversation uh, Chris was very, very, very kind to have with me. Uh, yes, unfathomable, unfathomable generosity, indeed. That link's in the chat there. You go check it out. That's over on my podcast channel. And also the podcast is going to be available everywhere. You get your podcasts like Stitcher and uh, 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 Spotify and Apple Podcasts and the, all, the other, all the other ones. Jonah. VNL. Hey, Jonah. Jonah says, hey, Dan, will you react to the album commentaries? They go in depth and all the pieces I think you find very interesting. Put this as a deadbolt, please. I will not react to the album commentaries because this channel is about uh, reacting to video game music, not the commentaries as well informed and interesting as they may be by the composers. Thank you, Rubber Man. I do appreciate that. Pikachu. Oh, Pikachu says, Pika, 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 which translated into English. Uh, means upvote for Fire Emblem Three Houses. You got it, Pikachu. Put in Hun has been a Kazoo Club member for six months. Thanks for hanging out, Put in Hun. Thank you also for upvoting uh, the Shin Megami Tensei and making that happen. Alessandro Quello, AC in the house. Says, hey, chat, another one towards Devil May Cry 5. Now I'm wondering, is it possible for us to do the special edition of the game? That includes some additional songs that add to the base game. Hope this is all right. Much love. I got no problem with that. I think doing a special edition would be fun. Sounds good, Alessandro, as long as I can find it. And preferably buy it. Oh, speaking of buying it, guys, in the in the uh, description of this video is a link. I know I'm now confusing you with giving you more than one call to action. But look, here's one more call to action. In the description of this, there's a link to Bandcamp where you can buy. I think it's in this one. I think I put it in all of them. Uh where you can actually buy the uh, the uh, blah, 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 the album off Bandcamp, which means the money goes directly 
to Chris, which would be a very, very cool way of supporting him. I actually bought it through Steam because I like to um, play things through Steam because it's all very convenient all in one place. Uh, but yeah, buying, buying on Bandcamp from artists in general is great because the money goes straight to them. Okay, uh, Alessandro Coelho. Oh, we read that one. Uh, and thank you, Pikachu. I saw that. Thank you. Uh, Jellical Dry. I feel like I'm saying some naughty words when I say that, but I'm not. It says, hey, yo, I just recently, uh, wa uh, I, I just recently started watching your stuff. Don't know how the recommendation work, but a funky weird OST I love with all my heart is M Mibibli's Quest. You can jam to that one day. I love it. We'll add it to the list. How about that? Thank you for your support. Thank you for your super chat. Oh yeah, Chris also has a special on right now for his whole discography on Bandcamp, which I did see. This is really cool. Get the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. Z, Z Dark Magician says, love your streams and now I can finally add my own recommendations. Please react to Xenoblade Chronicles 3 OSD at some point, literally the best OSD. You've got it. Jappy Padazaki. Hey, Jappy. This goes to Jazz Jackrabbit 2. Gunny says, going toward Made in Abyss Season 1 OST, movie OST in Season 2. Okay, is that a game or a TV show? Because I, I will do a game, Gunny. Gunny, are you around? Can you guys confirm that Made in Abyss is a game? Pikachu says, it was cool having Chris here. I agree. Thank you for hanging out, Chris. Looking forward to your interview with him. Me too. Oh, I already did it. I was looking forward to it. I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. It's not a game. I vote for Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Anime. Aren't they making a game of Maiden Abyss? Wasn't that the thing? Uh, Draco, Draco, Draco no core, Draconicor says, thanks for listening to Risk of Rain. In my opinion, the best OST in gaming. Ooh, put this towards Ultra Kill, please. Under the condition that it's not listened to until it's fully completed, currently and finished. Ooh, my goodness. I, I have no control of it. I mean, if it gets upvoted, I'll listen to it. I, yes. Sure. Elijah Y says, this is a cool experience. Thanks, Chris, for hanging out. Upvote near replicant, please. Yes, thanks, Chris, for hanging out. And Nex says, random, but what headphones are you using? Please put this suggested radio. I'm using Tascam headphones. They are the Tascam TH200X are the headphones I am using. If you want to know why I'm using them, it's because they were super on sale on some website. I was like, oh, these look like decent headphones and they're on sale and they have served me well. Okay, Gunny, we are we are uh, gonna hang out for a couple of moments. To see if Gunny's around, if not Gunny, no worries. Uh, you can always comment uh, or shoot me an email. We'll, we'll, we'll get you sorted out if you have left the stream. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, JoJo to JoJo games, yes. Chris says, hey all, and me. I'm gonna head out, but it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for listening to the music and your kind words. Chris, thank you so much for coming to hang out. This has been really, really awesome to have you here. Um, thank you, and have a great rest of your evening. It's pretty late over there. Have a, have a fantastic one. I hope your cats are well. Okay, well everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please hit like, subscribe, crush that notification bell, and if you are a gamer who uh, who's looking to understand a little bit more about music theory, I've got a free download for you. It's right there in the chat. It's the 10 things every gamer should know about music theory. Go grab it. Now, if you're asking me, Dan, what on earth is music theory and why does it matter? Well, music theory is really cool. 
Music theory is like, you know, in the Matrix when Neo could like see the Matrix, he's like, oh, I know Kung Fu, but like past where he knew Kung Fu, it's like the point where he could like fly. That's what like knowing music theories is like you can look at music and you know what's going on and you can break it all down. It's like you see the invisible code and all the rules and everything. It's like you see behind the music into the machine. So it's actually a really cool thing to know, even if you don't plan on playing music uh, or if you do plan on playing music, you should know music theory, especially if you want to write music. You should really know music theory because it's just a tool in your toolbox for you to use. So go ahead and check that out. And with that, I will see y'all next time. Gunny, we're gonna be looking out for you. Uh, shoot me a, a comment anywhere on this channel and uh, we'll make sure you, we get your uh, chat put towards the game. All right, I will see you guys next time. I will see y'all next week. See you then. Bye. Bye-bye, 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 bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.